Hello everyone and welcome to another exciting tutorial. Today I'll show you how to display any 3D model on a web page using SvelteKit and Threlt. I'll break down all the steps clearly so you can follow everything thoroughly. First, we need to install a SvelteKit project from scratch. You can follow my blog post where I have detailed all the steps clearly. I will use my custom script to install this Velkit project with Tailwind and DaisyUI. This automated script is also based on my blog post. I will add the link on the description box. Now run the server using npm run dev. The next step is to prepare the project for working with a 3D model. You can visit my website and search for Threlt first scene. You will find step by step processes. We will follow the steps too. First we have to install these packages. Since our application is already running from this window, we can add one more terminal and paste the code, which will install all the required packages. Let's check the package.json file, where all the installed packages will appear once the installation is completed. Now we need to configure white according to my blog post. Open the white.config.js file and make the necessary changes as described in the blog post. Let's check the browser. I can see there are no errors. So let's move on to the next step. A standard thrill scene consists of three main components. The first is a route page, which houses the canvas tag. The tag contains the scene file. Another component that includes light, cameras, interaction code, and 3D model itself. The third component is the 3D model file, which we can reference in the scene component later. Let's see all in action. Let's open the plus page.svelte file and import canvas from Threlt. I'm wrapping the canvas in a section and adding a special class called canvas wrapper. This class is necessary to prevent some component from extending outside of the canvas. I'm also setting the height to 700 pixel. As mentioned in my blog post, we need to import a scene file. So let's create that next. Inside the library folder, I'm creating another folder named scene to store the file. You can name it anything you like. I'm going to call it scene1.svelte file. In the svelte file, we need to import t from the threlt core. This is the building block of threlt. You might notice from my blog post that I have imported more components in the script tag, but I will introduce them gradually here so that you can follow along more easily. Let's add a grid using t. Now let's go back to the route page, import the newly created scene file and use it inside the canvas tag. Here I made a mistake, which is why there is an error in the console. Open the scene file. Here I incorrectly imported T without the curly braces. After fixing that, let's look at the browser. You might see a thin line because we are viewing the grid from a side angle. To adjust the view, we need to create a camera. Threlt uses all the camera types from 3JS and I'm going to use the perspective camera here. Once again, check the browser. You might see no changes because we need to set some parameter for the perspective camera. Starting with make default and then change the position. Check the browser again and you should see that the camera is now working properly. To make the camera more interactive, we can add a component called orbit controls. Use it inside the camera tag. Now check the browser again and you will see that you can now interact with the camera view. As noted in my blog post, I have added a bunch of parameters to the orbit controls. 
I will introduce those parameters gradually as needed. Let's add another component from Thrilled Extra, which is called Sky. After adding it, check the browser again, and you will see a sky has appeared in our scene file. Next, let's create an object. To do this, we need to use the t.mesh tag. Inside this tag, we'll add our object. Trailed provide all the object from 3.js using the t component. In this case, I am going to use sphere geometry. A large sphere appearing at the center of our scene. Let's update the camera position and enable zoom. Currently this sphere appears quite bright because we haven't added any material to it. Let's add a material. Threat include all the materials available in 3JS, so you can have plenty to choose from. I'm going to use mesh standard material. After applying the material, check the browser again and you should see that our sphere geometry is now shaded nicely. The sphere is intersecting with our grid, indicating we need to adjust its position. The 3JS and the thread both uses the same axis, where the X axis is side by side or horizontal, the Y axis is up and down or vertical, the Z axis is forward and backward, which is the depth axis. We need to update the Y position of the mesh tag to properly position the sphere. Let's make the adjustment and then check in the browser again. At this point, you might be wondering how I am remembering all the parameters for every component. Let me show you how I find these parameters. In most code editors, you can navigate to the component definition by holding the control key or common key on the Mac and clicking on the component. This action opens the components file. For example, in the mesh standard material, you will find a variety of parameters along with the value they accept. Let's adjust the roughness value and update the color value too. Setting the roughness value to 0 will make the object reflective. We can also make the object look like metal by modifying the metalness parameter. To make the scene more interesting, we can enhance the orbit controls by adding auto-rotate parameter. This will rotate the camera around the center point. We can enable damping for smoother interaction. Damping adds extra inertia to the orbit control, which creates a fluid and smooth camera motion. We can also adjust the auto-rotate speed. We can also adjust the auto rotate speed for slow or fast camera rotation. For the camera, we can modify the zoom and field of view. With the field of view parameter, we can control the portion of the scene we want to capture. Now that you understand the basic uses of the thrilled packages, let's move on to converting a 3D model file, ideally in GLB or GLTF format. 
You can find this step-by-step -step guide on my website, not only for Thrilled but for React too. Let's go to the Thrilled blog post and follow all the steps. If you would like to follow along, you can download the model featured in my blog post from Sketchfab which was created by the talented artist Carol Miklas. For this demonstration, I will be using GLB model. Let's start by downloading the 3D model into the static slash the 3D model folder. I'm going to show you an alternative to the sky component. So you can also download the HDR from polyheaven.com. Make sure to get the HDR file, not the EXR file. Next create a folder named HDR inside the static folder and store the downloaded HDR file there. Now we are going to convert the 3D model file to a Svelte component. Open a new terminal since our project is already running from this window. Now navigate to the 3D model folder which is inside the static folder. We can navigate in the terminal using cd command. Next, run the required command from my blog post. You must update the file name and location based on your file location. When using cd command, you can press tab to autocomplete the file name inside the folder. Run the command and you will notice a file is created inside the 3D model folder. These are components for the 3D model file. If you look at the generated file, you will see that our model is referred inside the gltf variable. Let's create a folder inside the library folder and name it models. Now move the newly created component into the model folder. Since we have changed the location of our component file, we need to update the location of gltf variable too. Now open the scene file and import the newly created 3D model file. Add the component. You'll notice the sphere geometry doesn't make any sense now. So let's comment it out. Since our model is intersecting with the grid, let's update its position too. To update its position, let's wrap the model inside t.group tag. This will help us to reposition our model. Let's change the position and update the scale parameter too. Also, the grid helper doesn't make any sense. So let's comment it out as well. We can enhance the appearance of 3D model by using the HDR image that we have downloaded earlier. To use the HDR file, we need to import another component from Thrill Extra and that is called environment. Environment component is part of the Thrill Extra. So let's import that. Here we are having an error because the environment component requires some parameter to start working. This component accepts a bunch of parameters that you can find in my blog post. Let's copy the code and update the parameter inside the files parameter. Immediately you can notice the model looks much more realistic than before. You might be wondering where all those reflections are coming from, where our background is still coming from the sky component. Let's comment out the sky component and change the parameter of each background to true. Now check the browser and you will see the HDR image is now showing inside our scene file. 
you can also set the use background to false and add some background color to the canvas on the route page now you know how to add cool 3d models to your website using svelkit and throughout with these skills you can make your web page project more exciting and show up products in a whole new way if you need any help just come back to this tutorial or ask any question. Keep exploring and having fun with web development. Happy coding!